Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we're going to explore a fundamental topic in rotor dynamics, which is rotor response to imbalanced forces. This is one of the most important concepts to understand when designing or analyzing high speed rotating machinery. Whether it's a jet engine, a rocket engine, or a centrifugal compressor. We'll be using the Jeff Gott rotor model to walk through the physics. And most importantly, the insights behind the rotor responses. And we're going to break this down into five different areas of interest across the frequency spectrum. Before we dive in, let's define the x-axis of the rotor response plot. The x-axis is called frequency ratio. The frequency ratio is simply rotor running speed over natural frequency of the system. So when the frequency ratio equals to one, the rotor speed coincides with the natural frequency. And this is where the rotor responses is high. If the frequency ratio is less than one, the rotor is spinning below its natural frequency. In this region, the vibration amplitude increases with speed. If the frequency ratio is greater than one, the rotor is running faster than the natural frequency and the response starts to decrease as speed increases. Understanding this plot gives you deep insight into what factors influence rotor behavior and why design decisions like stiffness, damping, and balance are so crucial. Now let's examine these five key regions one by one. At a frequency ratio of about 0.3, we are well below the natural frequency. Here the rotor spins about its geometrical center, and the imbalance force is relatively small. If we look at the governing equation, it simplifies nicely. And we can clearly see that increasing the shaft stiffness K reduces the amplitude of motion. This is why machines designed to operate in this region, like some low speed fans and blowers, benefit from high stiffness designs. Key characteristics to note here is that Rotor spins about geometrical center, and rotor response is in phase with the imbalance force, and bearing load is almost equal to imbalance forces. As rotor speed increases, we approach a frequency ratio of 0.8. The amplitude of vibration starts rising rapidly, and the rotor's motion begins to lag behind the imbalance force. The equation shows that the denominator in the response equation shrinks with increasing running speed, amplifying the motion. Also, the bearing load increases significantly, often exceeding the imbalance force itself. Key takeaways from this frequency ratio around 0.8 is that vibration amplitude increases steeply response lags behind imbalance. Now let's move on to the next area of interest. Frequency ratio of one is the most dangerous region where rotor speed matches the natural frequency. At this point, the response amplitude spikes and the simplified equation tells us the amount of damping in your system becomes the key variable in controlling peak vibration. Here, X is the amplitude of shaft vibration. In the denominator, C represents the damping. An increase in C leads to a reduction in X, meaning greater damping results in a lower vibration amplitude. If damping is low, even a small imbalance can cause severe vibration. The key takeaway at this speed is that response amplitude is maximum and also response lags 90 degrees and the bearing loads are high 
and damping is crucial to suppress rotor motion. Now the rotor passed through the natural frequency and the frequency ratio is around 1.2. As speed continues to increase, the vibration amplitude starts to decrease. The rotor begins to orbit around mass center rather than its geometrical center. Meanwhile, although the bearing load decreases, the imbalance force continues to grow with the square of speed. The key takeaway at this speed is that amplitude decreases, bearing load decreases, but the imbalance force still increases because rotor is spinning at higher speed. Now at very high speeds, say frequency ratio of 2.3, a unique thing happens. The rotor's amplitude becomes approximately equals to its eccentricity, and the simplified equations becomes x equals minus e. This means the rotor is now spinning about its mass center, and most of the imbalance force is now being handled by the rotor's own inertial forces. The key takeaway at this speed is that rotor spins about mass center and shaft amplitude is equal to its mass eccentricity and the bearing load is stable but the imbalance force continues to grow with speed. So what factors influence the natural frequency of a shaft in a rotating machine? The natural frequency is primarily governed by the shaft geometry and material properties. From the governing equation, we can see that increasing shaft stiffness by either shortening its length or increasing its diameter raises the natural frequency. These changes improve the shaft resistance to bending and deformation, enabling it to operate more stably at higher speed. The natural frequency of the shaft or rotor can be experimentally confirmed through impact testing. And the impact test can help to identify the bending mode shapes as well. So in summary, we've broken down the rotor response curve into five key regions. Each reveals how speed, imbalance, stiffness, and damping influence the dynamics. This insight is vital for predicting natural frequencies, designing shaft stiffness and support, and specifying the damping requirements. That's all for today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.